Hey there friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're wondering who is this old woman on this YouTube video, I'm here to tell you I'm only 38. Most of this gray hair is from my PhD, okay? But in today's video, I'm really going to be delving deep into talking about the differences between an academic CV and an industry resume. So I have had jobs both in academia and currently I work in industry or work outside of academia, okay? And the way you structure your CV slash resume is a different depending on where you're going. For most academic CVs, they tend to be 10, 15, 20 pages based on how many publications, speeches, awards that you've won. Most of the time, industry resumes do not care about that stuff. Yes, you could highlight it a little bit on an industry resume, but usually industry resumes are much shorter, even dare I say, the one I used to get my current position was just one page. Yes, it was a one page resume. It's really, really different. And so I'm gonna get on my computer and I'm gonna walk you through the differences between the two and how you can really begin to craft your industry resume or academic CV so that you can get the position that you're looking for. Okay, so here is my academic CV. It's actually a pretty simplified CV. Um, some people have, I've met, have way longer CVs than this. And essentially, um, I've left my name out of this, but what you would normally have at the top is your name, an address, a phone number. I also like to put in um, a LinkedIn, my LinkedIn address, so that if people wanted to check me out really quickly, they could do that. Also at the top of the CV, I do have microbiology, immunology, and host pathogen interactions because that was what my PhD was in. And I wanted people to be able to see that the moment their eyes hit my CV. So right after that, it's followed by my education, my PhD, my Bachelor of Science in Nursing, as well as my Bachelor of Science in biology and then it's followed by relevant work experience now i will say that you should give yourself permission to leave out any work experience that you do not think is relevant to your current position i know traditionally um resumes or cvs tend to list everything you've done but i'd say limit it to what you've done in the academic realm certain positions that you may have done outside of the academic realm may be important it's up to you to weigh but this was essentially the the cv i was sending out for academic jobs and so i limited it to my adjunct faculty position in biology at kuyamaka college i also included here my work as an independent health and medical writer and i did this um starting in two, uh, 2018 i had a freelance business I actually still do that uh, once in a while still um, and this was relevant because as a biology professor um, you you are going to mentor students on uh, how to write lab reports and how to put these things together and so having that expertise having that experience was important and actually it ended up being really important to my head of department of the biology department I was teaching at because she really needed me to mentor students in in this way okay so I put that on here um, I put down some other positions I had had including my postdoc position my graduate student researcher position and also some positions I had held when I was in nursing okay so right after that, I talked about my published work, and these are all the papers that I published in peer-reviewed journals, and so here's some work I did with some colleagues. And, you know, for me, when, once I got married, my name did change. I was Opong, and um, my husband's name is Nontra. So at a point, I did hyphenate my name, and now I just go by Nontra. And I mostly did that so that people would know that it was me who was writing these papers. Okay, so that when it came to compiling them, people were not confused. But um, essentially, this would be the place for you to put your published work and list everything, child. List everything. First author, middle author, 100th author, <laughs> list everything, okay? It's all important. After that comes my oral presentations, 
post up presentations and that's essentially it um, you could also put I didn't find this relevant at the time but after this this is where you could put any community involvement any extracurricular extra academic activities that you do that are not necessarily tied to academia but which shows a bit of your personality outside of the academic world you could put that here but personally I didn't put that here so this is my academic CV it's just about four pages if you've won awards if you have spoken at conferences more if you have um, you know won grants written patents everything goes on academic academic CV with academia it's all about accomplishments right but I'm about to jump into showing you my resume for industry and that's the resume that I actually uh, use when I was applying for my current position and it's much different so here is my resume um, that I used to apply for my current science and medical writing position and um, at the top again is my name my address phone number email as well as LinkedIn uh, profile link okay and see this is the thing that's different between an academic CV and a industry resume so earlier on I was talking about the fact that industry right whilst I don't necessarily see it as a soulless capitalist beast one of the biggest um, goals of industry or non-academic positions really is to make money right it's a business they need to make money this is how they're going to make money off of the invention and this is how they're gonna pay the employees right so they have to make money and so with an industry resume you really want to sell yourself as a solution right to the company's problem all right and and that problem is that they're trying to sell a widget and you're going to come in and help them sell those widgets okay so here was i was applying to a health insight and life sciences marketing agency and my objective was to use the 10 years worth of knowledge and experience in nursing biomedical research publishing peer review Reviewed articles and health writing to serve in a medical writer or communicator role and I saw all of these experiences as relevant right to this role that I wanted to to gain and I and I really did have a decade of experience and um, combined in this um, in these areas and so I put that in as the objective um, because in reading the job description right I realized that they needed somebody with a biomedical background who was also good at writing and um, and who understood really scientific concepts and so nursing biomedical research right publishing peer-reviewed articles that was all part of it after that I put in relevant professional experience I put my adjunct faculty position um, here kept it really really short as you can see it's limited I just limited it to three sentences over here I put in the fact that I was a freelance health and medical writer so, um, starting in January of 2018 again I kept that to about three sentences um, I've shared my postdoc position here because again it was relevant that I have a scientific background and then my graduate researcher position and I didn't feel the need to go beyond that and so that's where I ended my a professional experience Experience. and then I talked about my education very very shortly um, two sentences each and then also listed an ongoing certification with the medical um, uh, American Medical Writers Association and that was the whole resume <laughs> okay that was the whole resume so as you can see um, industry resumes are much shorter they are much more concise and they're much more focused on really positioning yourself as the person that that company wants to hire in order to meet their goals I hope that was helpful um, if it was let me know in the comments below and also let me know in the comments below where you're thinking of going are you thinking about staying in academia 
or are you really thinking seriously about entering into industry personally i have a little bit of bias towards industry yes i've worked in academic field and if you watch a few videos i've put on the channel here i've talked about a little bit about my experience as an adjunct professor but i will say that as fulfilling as teaching is and academics also do research right i would say that um working in industry is is so much more financially rewarding and also challenging on my brain because here's the thing in academia most of the time especially if you're not doing research and you're mostly teaching which is what i was doing as an adjunct the curriculum is the same once you have the curriculum once you develop it there may be a few changes here and there but it's pretty much the same and so semester after semester you'll be teaching the same things of course different ways of teaching and different styles of teaching come and go and so you'll have that right but in terms of really expanding outside of that body of knowledge i found okay and this everybody's experience is different i found that this was hard this was hard for me to do i would only focus on that information that i had to teach my class and nothing else however in industry i am constantly learning because research is always coming out innovations happen quickly you have to think on your feet you have to be fast and spry and so i never have the same day twice it's always different it's always challenging and that's exciting for me i love a good challenge so i would say that these are the biggest differences i have personally found um in you know between academia and industry now of course if you're doing cutting edge research that may be different but even research takes years and years and things in industry move way quicker than things in academia so let me know in the comments below which of these places you'll be going as a, a phd who is about to graduate or who has already graduated let me know in the comments below and if you're not subscribed what are you even doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button